Welcome back, fam. Thanks for being here. I'm so excited to see you. And I trust that you had an incredible week, just like I did. So many things happened, and I'll run you through a bit of it, but I have to say authentically that the reason my week was so outstanding is you. All of the support that you showered me with and the love and the questions and the responses I got, just truly thank you, thank you, and thank you. All right, should we get on with this? Let's do it. So what happened this week? On Instagram, you probably saw, you couldn't miss it because as a doting mother, I had to just keep throwing it at you, but my sweet little baby turned three yesterday. So we got to celebrate with him and boy, he is just the life of the party. It's incredible. He has this charisma and this inner wisdom and he just knows how to host a good darn party. And he's got the dance moves to prove it. So we had an incredible time. And you know, I have to say, all you mothers out there probably know what I'm gonna say, but it is life changing bringing new, brand new humans into this world. The entire process from pregnancy to delivery to the daily duty of raising these people into great humans. Um, and I just can't believe it's been three years. We always hear time goes so fast. COVID, I think especially, has just kind of messed up our chronological indicators and we are losing some track of time more than ever. But when your baby is three years old, you just have to sit back and take a deep breath and congratulate yourself for getting this far and strap in for a next, the next journey and all that is to come because with this one, it's gonna be wild. I do want to share one amazing tip. Every year on the birthday or around the birthday, we sit down and in front of a camera interview our kids. Sometimes they're really present and they're there with you talking to the camera. Sometimes they're not. But regardless, by doing this, every single year we get to talk about the highs and the lows and the big steps and the little steps and all of the things that happened that year and the new schools and the new hobbies and taking it all of the things. And the best part is when they're my age, they get to go back and watch all these videos and get to see their sweetness, their amazingness at all of these different ages from one to whatever. So that's something that we love to do. And of course we did that for Fremont this week. So maybe you'll think about doing that. And if you do, let me know how it feels. It makes me feel like I'm getting something right as a mother. And I think we can always use a few of those in our lives. So happy birthday, my love. You are the joy of our lives. You keep us crazy and we love you. Okay, on to all of you out there. Spring is here. It has sprung as they say. All of the new baby chickens are being hatched. And guess what that means? We get to hatch a few fun things for our closet, right? A little bit of an upgrade. We don't want to spend too much, but we want to get the right pieces so that we're on trend for now. And so that we just have a new invigoration of life, right? When we open up our closet. So color is the best way to do that for me. Most people know that I like to dress mainly in black and I let typically my hair color be the pop of color that all I need. But this year, guys, I know you've seen this, but it, the 80s are back. And as a girl who grew up in the 80s, I could not be happier. So look what we get to get. Neon colors, bright neon happy colors, and giant shirts, guys. This, These I got from ASOS, but look at this. Look at the enormity of this shirt. And how refreshing is that? In the springtime where we can you know, you can knot this up in a ball and make it cute and tight and still sexy for the gym, or you can wear it nice and big and baggy with some sneakers. So 
I'm loving that. And also, for that matter, look at this shirt, right? These wing shoulders are so amazing. Go 80s again. I have plenty of new shoulder pads in my closet this year, and so I'm sure you'll be seeing some of those. But some high-waisted jeans, of course, with wide legs. You've all seen that. That's what's back. Forget about those skinny, low-waisted jeans anymore. Let's cover ourselves up a bit. That's exciting. And, you know, another trend that's big is Birkenstocks, okay? I grew up wearing Birkenstocks. My grandmother gave me my first pair, and I'm obsessed. My brother still wears them. He's always worn them. Having said that, I just can't get back into it, guys. They're so comfortable and so great, but there's something about it, so, that I don't really like. But, so, this is what I'm doing instead. These are just some fun, you know, sort of platformy, very simple straps, sandals. So that's what my closet's gonna look like this spring, and I am so excited about that. Excuse me. And something else is a fun manicure, right? I posted on Instagram a picture of my grapefruit spindrift matching my manicure, which is still here. Um, but, so it's this color. A lot of you had asked what it was, and this is SC Resort Fling. They always have the best names for things, right? So I think I have a Cabana Boy Blue, which is another favorite, but this is Resort Fling, and it's, I think, great for this spring. Go 2021. This week's nutritional supplement that I'm gonna highlight is bee pollen. There it is. This one is fluffy. <laughs> fluffy and fresh. Um, so I don't know how many of you have have bee pollen in your home, but it's another thing like the Bruce Blue Spirulina we talked about last week that I think households should have. This, if you've ever ordered an acai bowl here in Los Angeles, it's pretty common that you'll find a, a sprinkling of a few pieces of these bee pollen on top of your acai bowl. I just think people should have bee pollen in their home. It's not hard to get. I picked this up at Whole Foods in the refrigerated section. But what is it good for, you ask? <laughs> well, it's an antioxidant. Great. It is an anti-inflammatory. Amazing. It boosts liver function. Fantastic. It also boosts your immunity. Yes, please. And it may even help with menopausal symptoms like hot flashes. So, guys, let's get this. You can just sprinkle it on your oatmeal or your yogurt, put it into shakes, or just literally eat it off of a spoon. So, easy to take, beneficial, doesn't cost a lot, and I hope you'll start incorporating it into your nutritional toolbox. Okay, guys, so on to Q&As. Again, you came at me from so many places, and it was great. Thank you for that. Keep it coming. Um, and this time you actually gave me names and sometimes even where you live, so I get to share that with you. Yay! Score! So the first question is from Jade. Do you have any pointers for a new yogi? Well, Jade, I do. Yoga is an internal practice. Let's just get that out there right away. Yoga is about working from your inside out as so many important things are in life, but that's for another episode. So, when you're preparing yourself to go into that yoga studio and you're putting on your cute, comfortable outfit and you're preparing your mind to be with a bunch of people in a room, getting sweaty, challenging yourself, my biggest tip is to let it all go. Let the outside world, let all of the distractions, let those around you go and be with yourself. Be there and get what you want and what you need for that moment. It's gonna be different in each moment. It's for sure different each day or each week. So what is it that you need in that moment, in that class, on that mat, right then, now? What do you need and go get it? You know, as someone who is admittedly pretty competitive um, and I'm blessed, you know, I grew up dancing ballet and so I'm blessed with a naturally flexible body. And so, 
Yoga is an amazing activity for me, but only when I'm practicing from inside. If I'm not, I'm so competitive and I'm trying to get my leg up to where I could have when I was 20 years old. Or I might be looking over at all the other people and wondering, oh my gosh, do they see me? Am I doing this right? It is so ridiculous and this is, this is to me the reason yoga is the, one of the most important practices, one of the most important physical activities that we can do because it forces us to go within. I've said it again, yoga is about inside, not outside. But yes, with consistency, the more you show up, you will see things change from the outside. You will see your shape change. You will see your flexibility increase. You will see your strength. You'll feel your strength. So number one, Jade, welcome to the Yogi Club. Very happy you're here. And please enjoy your practice. Make it your practice, no one else's. Even if your instructor is up there shouting out different poses and it doesn't feel right for your body that day, guess what? You're not gonna do it. You're gonna do what's right for you right then. And that's it, okay? So I hope that helped a bit and you can tell I feel passionate about this. And again, it's, it is such a mind exercise, more so than many that you can take on. And that means that you like to challenge yourself. So that is an incredible thing. Congratulations. All right, Jade. Who is next? Oh, Claire asks, what are the best spots to visit in Los Angeles? That is a really hard one, Claire, but um, you asked this actually at a great time for me to give a shameless plug because Shout Out LA did a profile on me just this last week and that was one of their questions. So it's all in the article, I'll link to it below. But the gist is I live on the west side. I live near Culver City and I wanted to give real, a real look into what my life is, what a local hair really does, not something that sounded cool necessarily, right? I wanted to be completely transparent. So you'll find everything from, of course, great beach hikes to a hole in the wall brunch place to some great shops and other things, but typically things that you're not gonna really find in the books. So I hope it's helpful. And when you come to Los Angeles, enjoy our city. It is truly incredible. And there's so much to take in. You could be here forever. Maybe you'll stay. Ha <laughs> ha, we could be neighbors. Okay, we're gonna do three questions today. This last question is actually from a friend of mine, Lynn. <laughs> and this is so amazing. It just had to be asked. And she said, Laura, are you always in a good mood? I mean, so what I think is the person who knows me the best and who is also probably the most honest needs to be the one to answer that question. So if you will, Hunter. Hey bud, will you come up love? Will you come up please? It's spring break, so he's been downstairs on house party with his buddies, just living the life. Outside, throwing the ball around, swimming, do, just doing it, right? I mean, spring break, guys. Spring break, y'all. <laughs> hey, cutie. Hi. Do you mind coming in here? Where you can actually be seen? We you sit right here? Okay, cool. Oh, look at this. Hi. This is Hunter, hi. Um, so we're doing a Q and A. And someone asked me a question that I'd like you to answer first, okay? And they asked, Lara, are you always in a good mood? No, nobody is. Okay, that's very true. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there anything to elaborate or is it as simple as that? It's as simple as that. Buddy, yeah. this is a wise guy right here. A very wise, incredible human who I love very much. So thank you for that, for shedding some light. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought he was gonna get a little crazier on me and say, no, sometimes you're yelling at us. But he didn't. And so that shows 
how in touch he is, right, with humanity, right, and with how his emotions. It's, yeah, I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> okay, I'll see ya. So Hunter said that so perfectly, it was as though we scripted it, which we didn't, but allow me to elaborate a bit, okay? He's so right, we're human and no one is in a good mood all the time. The difference is, and maybe something that I have, which is what Lynn was referring to was, I have optimism, natural optimism. And I'm pretty good at identifying when I'm not in a good mood. And by identifying it, it brings it to my consciousness. I become present. I'm starting to sound like Eckhart Tolle right now, but I become present by just acknowledging I'm not in a great mood. And I'll tell you something I do around my house because the vibe in this house and the energy typically spawns off of me, off of mama. And if I'm in a bad mood, guess what? Everyone else from baby to dad get into a bad mood. So because I care about them and because I'm certainly not trying to make a bad mood any worse than it might already be, I like to bring everyone together and say, hey guys, I'm not sure if you could tell already, which of course they typically have been able to tell, but I'm in a weird mood. Something feels off with me. I need you to be a bit more understanding and patient with me for the next little while. And then I typically remove myself. I take my three deep cleansing breaths like we talked about last week and I reset myself and I choose to be in a good mood because guess what? Life is short. Time is limited. We don't get more of it. And I am not trying to live my life in a bad place. I'm not trying to live my life feeling icky and unlike my true self living to my true potential. So no, I'm not always in a good, in a bad mood. <laughs> Freudian slip. I'm not always in a good mood, but when I do find myself in a, in a bad mood, I acknowledge it. I actively do something to shift myself and I get out of it as soon as I can. Okay, there that is. But thank you, Lynn, for asking. I know it was partially a joke, but I just wanted to bring this up because, guys, you know, anybody who you see in front of a camera or anyone who's posting anything to Instagram, of course, they're posting the best photos. Of course, they're posting the ones where they look the youngest and where they have the most energy and where they're the bubbliest and most radiant and their kids are just glorious. People rarely post anything else and that's human nature and we shouldn't be. I, you know, I also am of the mind that my problems are not your problems. My problems are something for me to deal with. It's my challenge in the moment to help me grow. You don't have to have anything to do with that. So actually there is a pretty funny story that I'll just bring up because, oh gosh, I must have been about 10 years old and I was skateboarding out in front of my childhood home and I had a crazy fall to the point where my knee, both knees were skinned and like bloody and there was gravel, you know, like in the open wounds and all of the things. I'm, I'm sure, so, oh, my palms, same thing. So ah, I'm out there in front of the house by myself and a neighbor comes up and says, oh my goodness, are you okay? They had just come out of their house and seen me on the ground. And in that moment, I could have cried and screamed and done all of the things that might be your first instinct, but do you know what I did? This tells you who I am. I looked up and I said, I'm fine, how are you? Have a great day. And they turned on their way and said, okay, you too. And as soon as they turned, I just fell back into tears because it was in, I was in so much pain and probably also some egoic pain because how could I have missed all, up on that trick so badly? But there it is, right? I, it wasn't their problem. They couldn't do anything to help me. It wasn't their responsibility to make me feel better. That is my responsibility. The only person who can make myself feel better or feel bad is me. So guess what? That's just the way I sort of live life naturally and, and that has helped me in countless ways. Countless. So there it is. Lynn, thank you.
for letting me say all of that with your question. I appreciate it and I love you. I miss you. So now it's so exciting. We get to move into the question to self. If you tuned in last week, you know that my new thing is that I want to start asking a question to self for everyone to consider that will hopefully allow them to grow even more than they might otherwise grow in that week. So last week I asked, a year from now, you may wish you had started today. What is that for you? And I said I would have a big list of things because I like lists and there's so many things I could add to it pertaining to this question, but you guys came up with the best ones. So Sarah DeLuca, who's coming to us from Italy, ciao, Bella, <laughs> um, said this, start taking care of yourself now, exclamation point. Find out what you really want and do it. Do what makes you feel happy inside. And it was a beautiful email. It went on to describe how she's a therapist and how she's been giving so much of herself to others that she kind of forgot to focus on herself and that was changing today. So congratulations, Sarah. I'm so excited. And by the way, your English is impeccable. But you, you're, you amaze me. You absolutely amaze me for acknowledging that this is a change that you needed to make and for having the courage to make it, to focus on yourself. So all the best blessings to you and what great advice for all of us, right? This is why I shared your, your thought, your response. Okay, the next question is from Grace and I'm not sure where you're from, Grace, but you said you were going to read more and that is one that is for sure on my list. So, you know, I'm with you. It's a challenge when life is busy and I'm not sure if you have other people to take care of and to make sure they survive <laughs> the day, but life is busy and I don't even have time really to watch any of the great Netflix. Although on occasion, I'll go ahead and binge something like Bridgerton for sure. Shout out to Shonda. But you know, Reading is so important and I know that and I love it and the way your imagination and your mind works when you're actually reading words, I get you girl, I'm with you, I'm joining you in that and good luck to you, let me know how it goes. And finally from Shannon, she says more self-care, eating healthy, getting outside, doing more small things for people. Ah. And I love that. Those are three incredible things right there. I mean, eating healthy, yes, yes. Congratulations on that. Your future self will be very happy you did that and it, you will be living longer because of it. Getting outside. I mean, nature, guys, it is so incredible. This earth i know i say this but the earth is incredible and if we are if we allow ourselves just some peaceful time to meander and be with nature with our feet on the ground ground and feeling the energy that's coming from it you know we would all be much better off so i'm going to add that to my list i do get outside but i want to get outside even more okay um and doing small things for people that is just such a beautiful thing to goal yourself to do every single day. You know, it's actually Mother Teresa, and this is gonna be my next question for next week, but she says, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. So thanks, Mother Teresa. That is gonna be the thought for next week. What small things can you do with great love that will make an impact on your life and those around you. I, it's as simple as that, right? Again, I'm sure I'm gonna have a long list of things there. And Shannon, I'm curious what you meant when you answered last week's question with doing small things, doing more small things for people. So that's it for this week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for giving me a purpose here on this YouTube. You know, I termed it you all capital tube because that is what this forum is for me. It's YouTube. And I so appreciate being able to talk about the things that I love, that I'm passionate about, and know that it's 
being received with love and with support and with gratitude. So all back at you, sending all of the goodness your way, and I'll see you next week. Until then, live lit up. No, thank you. Snack time. <laughs> Love you.